Hey everyone, welcome back to our Demystifying Research channel. Today we're going to be building on our previous videos and further discuss Western blotting, with a focus on practical applications such as diagnosing diseases. Before we dive into how we can use Western blotting, I would like to highlight key features of Western blotting, and how these features are crucial for today's discussion. Firstly, Western blotting can be used to detect a certain protein in samples. The proteins are put through a gel that with small holes and electricity, separates and organizes various proteins based on their size. This process is known as gel electrophoresis. Researchers can then see if the protein isolated is disease-causing or not. If there are any concepts that do not make sense or interest you, feel free to check out our previous videos that are focused on Western blotting. Now that we have an idea of how the Western blot is used, it begs the question, what is it used for? Many researchers and scientists use Western blotting for biochemical applications, such as protein expression. Many clinical researchers use the Western blot to determine antibody expression. Now the last one ties into our main focus today. One of the practical applications of the Western blot is diagnosing diseases. Can the Western blot diagnose? The Western blot can diagnose many diseases, but the ones we'll be discussing today are tularemia, HIV, and Lyme disease. The Western blot is often used to confirm an HIV diagnosis. A blood sample is taken and tested for HIV antibodies. As we know, the Western blot is great at identifying antibodies, and if there are any present, it confirms the presence of an HIV infection. Otherwise, the body would not need to make any. While the Western blot is good at detecting the infection, it is often paired with other tests because it does not give all the information necessary. For example, it cannot differentiate between HIV-1 and HIV-2, which is an important distinction to make as they have separate treatment regimens. The Western blot is often paired with these other tests to confirm the specific diagnosis. Tularemia is another disease that uses multiple lab techniques, including the Western blot, to make a diagnosis. Tularemia is known as a rabbit fever and is often a difficult disease to diagnose because the symptoms are often mistaken for those of common illnesses. Once a patient's blood is taken, it is run through blood cultures, including a western blood. The bacteria F. tularensis is difficult to isolate for, so blood cultures often come back negative. The western blood is once again used to confirm the presence of this bacteria in the blood once positive in a blood culture. That brings us to our final disease, Lyme disease. Lyme disease is caused primarily by a bacteria known as Borrelia burgdorferi and in special cases, by Borrelia myoni. Lyme disease is vector-borne, meaning individuals are infected through vectors. Vectors are living organisms that can transmit infectious pathogens such as bacteria or viruses. The vector that transmits Borrelia burgdorferi are ticks. Ticks are found in nature, typically in wooded areas, so many people often get bit by ticks during hikes. Lyme disease is a unique disease compared to the other two because it initially requires an enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, or ELISA test, followed by the Western blot. Before we dive into why we don't primarily use the Western blot, let's discuss what ELISA does. ELISA is a type of immunoassay, which is essentially a procedure to measure specific proteins through their antibodies or antigens. Antibodies recognize foreign pathogens, such as bacteria or viruses. While there are many forms of ELISA, the main thing we need to know is that we induce an antigen-antibody interaction to determine whether there is a certain protein present. While this method is efficient, ELISA is known to produce false positives, indicating there is a protein present when there is not. This is not ideal as it would diagnose someone with Lyme disease when in reality they might not have it. Now that we know what ELISA is, I hope some of the similarities are clear. Both ELISA and the Western blot can detect Borrelia burgdorferi, so why don't we just use one over the other? ELISA returns many false positives, after which the western blot is used to specify the protein and confirm its presence. The western blot is not the primary method of detection, as it is time-consuming and difficult to use. ELISA, on the other hand, is relatively fast and gives us much more information, as it is not constrained to one antibody like the western blot is. Regardless, these methods are used in conjunction to diagnose Lyme disease. Overall, we learned there are many applications for Western blotting, from being used frequently in lab research to being used in a clinical school setting to diagnose diseases. We know that Western blotting is often paired with other tests, especially ELISA. 
I also did not mention all the uses of Western blotting, as many researchers continue to evolve the way we use the Western blot to discover new information. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next video.